All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, buenas tardes. Boa tarde. Thank you for joining us. Uh, and actually, for some of you who are in the California area, then still good morning. Eh? I'm here today with uh, three wonderful uh, ladies, uh, Bilur, uh, Buta, eh? your honor, and Sule, uh, from our wonderful DMC, ILT, ITEM Travel. So uh, today, I think we're going to go to see some hidden treasure. And I'm going to let you show you what you have in mind for us. Huh? Thank you so much, Dominic. Actually, we very much liked, uh, enjoyed preparing the presentation and hopefully you will enjoy it uh, like we are enjoying our country. So we would like to share some uh, of the, like the hidden treasures of uh, Turkey. Nowadays, uh, I mean, maybe you already know that now, uh, now the ministry is working very hard to promote, it's not like Turkey, but Turkey, the name of Turkey. So we will be sharing some of the insiders tips with you. Uh, so uh, as a, as a uh, one of the junior uh, members of the team, uh, uh, hello to everybody first. This is my first ever web webinar. So uh, hello, good morning and good afternoon for everybody. Uh, you might know that you are missing something or just looking for some new tricks you already existing itineraries uh, you might have uh, some requests for uh, exclusive clients and they are looking for some hidden places off the beaten track something with a surprise or a little spicy twist that actually hard to find something so this is where we are coming for your help and uh, some over there things will be so interesting that you might not just want to sell it but also come here and just see those places yourself as soon as possible. So I hope that you will enjoy what we have prepared for you. So we would like to talk about Turkey first, Turkey, sorry. Turkey has seven regions and the, you know the Istanbul very well. It's the gateway to Turkey. It's located at the Marmara region. It's a two continent city. It combines uh, Europe to Asia. It combines Middle East to uh, Europe as well. And the Black Sea side, you can see on the northern part of the country, it's a very long, uh, it has a very long uh, sea area. It started from Istanbul till end of the Georgian area. And the, on the eastern side of Turkey, we called it, uh, we called that part eastern part of Turkey. And what we have there, we have the Mount Ararat, which is the one of the highlight in that area. When you go down the southeastern part of Anatolia, you can see the Mesopotamia, which is the first civilization in the world. And then when you continue to the western part from the sea level, and uh, so you maybe you heard the name of Antalya, but it's the what very well known place in the country, it's, we call that area Turkish Riviera. And uh, so when you go, when you go uh, further, you come to Aegean Sea and the uh, Ephesus, Bodrum, Fethiye, Lysian area, Izmir, and the Troy, Tro Troya, Assos is located on that part of the country. So, and when you go the, come to the central part of Anatolia, Cappadocia, we have a famous region of Cappadocia. You can visit in the country. Of course, there are many other more. And now we're going to talk about some of the hidden treasures in the country. Which we have highlighted as well on the map to give you an idea, to give you a better orientation of where we are speaking. So we would like to start actually with our beloved city, Istanbul, uh, actually, which is the gateway to, to, uh, to Turkey, which is uh, actually, which will be never enough to spend time in the city, whether you're staying for two nights, five nights, or you will always be finding uh, different alternative different options. If you're a lover, uh, if you're a museum lover, foodie, or a enthusiast or jet setter, then you will always be finding something suiting your taste. But today we would like to speak about more unknown and unexpected corners of the old part of the city. The uh, map that you are seeing right now is a sample of one of the oldest quarters in the city. And it's just one sample. We have many, many of them. 
but one of them is showing here it actually pictures one of the first settlements when Istanbul was conquered uh, back in the 15th century and the uh, uh, places over there the churches actually some of them are mosques right now but the churches are standing there since the time of the Hagia Sophia as well so this sample itinerary shows what could be done in let's just say uh, three to four hours if you are really into some details and it could be a little fast track but uh, once you are there you will show you will see that this fast track is not an option and you just really want to take it slow enjoy your time and just check all those beautiful houses streets and uh, you know stop once in a while for a for a bite or a coffee or just you know uh, chat with some locals or looking into the you know the pictures streets of uh, old istanbul so the route the sample route over here would take you from a the second church, as I said, right after the Hagia Sophia, it's the Pantakraton Monastery. If you could find it uh, this way on uh, you know internet, but now it has a modern Turkish name, uh, Mola Zeyrek Mosque, and uh, that's one of the perfect samples how the city was looked like back then. So this is a walking route. We, it would require like a mid fitness level, let's just say. Uh, it wouldn't be a good idea for someone with uh, with a stroller, let's just say, or someone who has a walking problem because it's mainly those stubble narrow streets. So uh, you would work from the uh, from the mosque uh, all the way to the neighborhood. There's a little uh, mosque. There are some Turkish baths. There are some uh, fountains, like little fountains. Uh, and then uh, you just, you know, ending up at some little corner where you could leave the uh, Roman aqueduct right on your side. The next to it is just like tiny little coffee shops and some places where you can have a traditional Turkish drink uh, or, uh, you know, those spectacular uh, mosques, which are like two uh, centuries later. So in one uh, picture shot, you could see the time zone mm -hmm. from, uh, let's just say, 14th century to 17th century and even to the early 90s. Uh, and everything in, uh, in one frame, it just shows how incredibly uh, rich with the historical sites and the cultural experience Istanbul might be. You, you could just uh, see that uh, interior doesn't uh, so always match with the exterior. And behind the very old door, you can see that the incredibly modern uh, art gallery or a little Turkish bath, you know, which might not even, you know, hint from the outside how it looks like. And of course, food is always part of the of the program and part of the of the, you know, the let they say trick over there because the oldest hoods always uh, include one of the traditional off uh, touristic places that you would never know without uh, going there with a local. And our guides are always very experienced and they can take you to some incredible places where you could have a, like the, the most delicious uh, piece of sweet or let's just say uh, kebab, you know, Turkish equal kebab. This is what we are proud of. And uh, it, it, it always is a highlight of, of the day, let's just say, if you already done with the regular museums, if you are not here for a first time or you have a couple spare days in hand and you can just, you know, want to have that a bit taste of the culture and the food and maybe just like in the county with the, with, with the locals, you know, with the community sometimes, even local school or sometimes. Uh, this is my favorite. I I just uh, the, the the fun of the of the holiday is always strolling the streets. But actually, I mean, you as well very much enjoy walking from one corner of the city to the other. Yeah, part I'm a there. walker, so <laughs> yeah, walkers, I'm yeah. a walker. So those four or five kilometers <laughs> in two, three or four hours would be just you know my 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 type of the of, of the thing of the fun. Let me just go back to two uh, two slides back to the Zeyrek Chinili Hama, which is the Turkish bath, which has recently been renovated and now being used as the, the Museum of Modern Art and the collections of, as you can see, the old uh, like slippers, like the wooden slippers, or uh, and actually speaking about the 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 treatments and the uh, the retreats, how the retreats were located, and definitely not to be missed is one of my favorites in life is the the fermented like semolina drink which is the boza and the, which you drink with like the roasted chickpeas and cinnamon on top of it 
So it's definitely something that you should not be missing. Or there are, uh, and the area which we couldn't uh, explain right here, uh, but as uh, Ruta is explaining, is full of culinary uh, treasures from uh, from pastries to kebabs or any other type of uh, well, food. Uh, as we have spoken, this is only a half day program, but you can end up the program with a visit to the Grand Bazaar or just doing with a different perspective, visiting the rooftops of the Grand Bazaar and seeing the, the Turkish bath. Maybe why don't you continue uh, to, like pampering yourself in a traditional Turkish bath at the historical part of the, the city? That yeah. can be uh, always extended till uh, till the later days or later hours of the day, and the area is as well offering to uh, to just find out not the tourist stuff, but where the locals are just getting their uh, like Turkish lights or like the old uh, style of Turkish hats or anything like uh, where you can live as the real Istanbulites. Yeah, are uh, buying and uh, for the hammam treatment, you you can consider about one hour. So for to combine this tour with uh, in with the afternoon, so it, in the morning it takes about let's say four hours, and the lunch break, and the, in the afternoon rooftop visit, visit grand bazaar, and the hammam treatment. So you may consider again another three hours. Yeah. And now another thing that we, another uh, topic that we would like to speak is about the zero point in time, the area which we very much love, which we are so excited about and, uh, and as being keen on history, deep history, like mankind and the area and talk about the, the Shanlı Urfa area, which recently we were there like yeah. two weeks ago and uh, visited the site like again and again after many years and seeing the development was so incredible. So just give an idea about, uh, uh, to remember the, uh, the map, the whole Turkey, Turkey map, it's uh, very close to the Mesopotamia area. It's actually the Northern Mesopotamia area, which we call the, fer uh, which we are proud of with the fertile uh, lands, fertile earth. And, uh, and it's actually, you might know it with the being as a part of the UNESCO since uh, 2018. And it, it all started with the Göbekli Tepe. Tepe means hill, Göbek means uh, with tummy. the tummy. <laughs> so uh, now the, uh, first of all, let me go from here. The government, the Ministry of uh, Turkish Culture and Tourism is uh, running a project about all these tepe. These are the oldest uh, temples and uh, these are the oldest temples, settlements in the world dating back to from 10,000 to 12,000 BC. And it all started with Göbekli Tepe and now there are like 12 other tepes uh, which are now uh, being under excavation and uh, the excavation project is going on in the area. And uh, this actually changed all our uh, thinking of the, the the, where the humans, uh, yeah. human and the prince about our yeah, really knowledge true. about the prehistoric ancestors. And uh, sorry, Bilder, uh, so the only Göbekli Tepe that you can visit, and we also get special permission from Karahan Tepe, and so we can visit the Karahan Tepe with a special permission. Other than that, all those tepes, it is not allowed to visit because of the uh, archaeology excavation. But going back to the uh, going back to the map, we uh, we have formed up like a two day program, uh, just to give you an idea what you can offer to your guests. So uh, uh, we do have like daily flights from Istanbul to Urfa, which is about two hours yeah. flight from Istanbul to Urfa, visiting the Göbekli Tepe, Karahan Tepe, Somater Antik City, and the Şanlı Urfa Old City. The Şanlı Urfa is actually. The, where you can find the world's oldest temple, oldest study, oldest mosaic, and is uh, the most important area for the for religions mm -hmm. uh, in the uh, in the history and in Turkey. And uh, let me go through the the photos of the the Göbekli Tepe. Göbekli Tepe is uh, starting the project in two thousand nine and uh, getting the uh, UNESCO heritage list in two thousand eighteen. Uh, the 
Göbekli Tepe is formed of diff, like 10 different sections. And it's believed that uh, it's all uh, done for, uh, as actually as a temple area. And uh, you can see the different formations of the animal formations on the T-shaped uh, stone pillars of Göbekli Tepe. And with the same era, uh, you can visit the Karahan Tepe, but what's different in Karahan Tepe is uh, now you can see the visual shapes of the statues of the human uh, yeah. human in real sight. Considering that age, we are talking about 12,000 BC and 10,000 BC, and the sculptures and the shapes, those are really amazing. And uh, so every day, the, the details and the, the informations are changing. And for example, three years ago, there was nothing in Göbekli Tepe. Now it's became a, a very popular place. And uh, so it's again a popular place in the local uh, people because because of the National Geographic documentary films and the, everybody started to worry about that area. But Karahan Tepe and the, all other tepes is still under excavation, and uh, so we are always getting a new information from the area. It's so uh, interesting to hear that um, everybody is saying, I mean, according to the information gathered until today, this is what <laughs> we can tell you. But tomorrow, maybe the story will totally be changed and we will speak about another uh, story. And then the other place is the Somatar Antique City, which is again on the same route. And it's so important for Christianity and Judaism and Paganism. Uh, because, and you can see it's a very mysterious place and with dozens of rock uh, tombs and uh, like the Pognan case, it's a sacred place. So it's actually a more sacred route that we would be following. And uh, overnight in overnighting in the uh, city of Urfa. Yeah, in the city of Urfa, there are uh, some small boutique hotels, traditional style hotels and all uh, in the old part of the city. So the city, City of Edessa or Şanlıurfa has two parts, old part and the new part. Now we are talking about the old part of the city, which uh, and there are some uh, boutique style small hotels in that area within walking distance to the historical sites in Şanlıurfa. And the, the, the famous one is the Balıklı Göl in Turkish and English, uh, in English, Abraham Lake with holy fishes and uh, so uh and the other place very well known place and the amazing mosque is the Halil Rahman mosque which is located within the same place with the Balıklı Göl these are uh, most of the places are located very close to each other as you can see on the map and it's actually a, it's so strange that the, according to the narration the fishes are considered as holy because they have protected uh, Prophet Abraham from being dead. And uh, because of the, uh, and like when he was in a fight with Nemrut, King Nemrut, and then he had to, he wanted to burn him, but all the wood turned into fishes. And since that day, they are considered as uh, like holy fishes and they are considered that they are living until today. Yeah. So it's actually definitely not permitted to be caught or to be eaten. <laughs> and uh, the as you can see, these you will be experiencing all the stone houses, narrow streets, the uh, beautiful pieces of the archaeological uh, sites, and uh, different tastes. The bazaars of the area with colorful textiles, lots of different spices, dried uh, fruit, and uh, they. And thanks to actual different civilizations, uh, different people with different backgrounds, all the culinary, all the culture, from music to lifestyle uh, is actually mixed. And they have a different style of breakfast in the morning, starting early in the morning, with eating lots of meat, which yeah. we don't do that in <laughs> Istanbul, but it's actually a different tradition. And it's nice to experience it. And liver, liver is liver, very, yeah. very, yeah, they eat liver in the morning, uh, very early in the morning as a breakfast. And so you can consider that area like time machine. And so you, sometimes you consider that you are 
visiting the you know places in a different age from the middle ages yeah from the middle ages so it's nice to have a contrast of different experience during the night time let's talk about it let uh, during the evening time so they uh, do traditional music they call it sregecesi it means like um it's a special night with the traditional music and the, most of the locals they love to participate there but if they like to see how the people entertain in that area with the according with their traditions we always suggest them they just join and see if they love to stay of course they can continue to the night it takes about three hours and they, so if they just to see the, the, their culture, music culture, and the lifestyle in that area. But it's a kind of celebration as yes. well, just eating, as we have been speaking every time, that eating is so important for our culture, and we just uh, excuse, find different excuses yeah. for being socializing. And Anatolian cities are so different from Istanbul, yeah. where everything is more genuine and, and more warm. A relation and the neighborhood and the locals are very uh, friendly so if he if you would just pass by some like court uh, courtyard of the back house and you can see that there's a wedding happening or something you definitely will be invited and you will be insisting sitting and have a sip of tea or yeah. just a piece of yeah. cake or just a bowl of rice or whatever is serving at that dinner I mean it's it's a must I mean you cannot skip the local people just enjoying and encounter them for a little <laughs> meal or chat yeah. depends on the english level of course yeah, sure. <laughs> the other area which we would like to talk about is just now uh, we would like to take you up to the black sea part of the country uh, with with actually a hidden gem of the baksi museum because when we're speaking about like the the contemporary museums it's always just with like great art pieces like crowds and just following for art but the baksi museum uh, thanks to the uh, to its founder Hisamettin Kocan, he is actually a well-known uh, sculptor from that area. And uh, the area, it's actually you will be noticing uh, like huge plateaus, like being in the middle of nowhere and up on the mountain. And uh, people are normally uh, like spending their time and earning their life with like farming. But it's actually for a certain period of time, which caused uh, just getting the pe people are mm -hmm. getting the youngsters out of the the villages so, yeah. and uh, moving to other cities and the uh, the Baxi museum has been formed by him with the uh, aim of uh, just creating with the aim of a social responsibility and especially creating the woman uh, empowerment the woman uh, like getting the woman into business and getting them integrated into business and earning their life so they are doing atelier uh, with the uh, with the schools, with the primary schools and the, with the high schools in that area, and the, again with the village people. And uh, as you said, it's there. It's now like a small co uh, complex with the uh, modern museum, with the ateliers, with its hotel, and uh, it's actually uh, it has been awarded by the uh, the committee of the Council of the European Museums to be the best museum uh, because of different reasons. And it's so it has been so interesting mm -hmm. for me. And it's actually, you will see the shamanist culture and uh, the name is coming from the shaman name as the healer helper. So it's uh, getting its name from that area. And uh, so correct, okay. Let That's, me go to the Baxi yeah, Museum. Yeah. Because as you will see, Baxi is located up on the mountain in the middle of nowhere and uh, it's actually being recognized with its uh, different architecture yeah and so because of the it's located in the nowhere <laughs> and uh, so they they have a very a small but a very comfortable hotel section in the in the museum area so yeah in the museum area there are galleries there are library and there are the museum as area and the accommodation area as well and it's actually a, a great opportunity if for those who are looking for different things i mean not only being uh, in a car but maybe just driving their own vehicles or mm -hmm. like with the special uh, program throughout 
that area with the, uh, with the guides, of course. Yeah. Then uh, we would like to speak about the other parts of the going upwards to the Black Sea area, to the uh, beautiful play, to the beautiful uh, cave of Karaja cave. And uh, from the, uh, let me go to the, from the, uh, Boxing Museum, we will be taking the Zigana Tunnel. Why are we talking yes, about the Zigana Tunnel? Because it took years and years due to the uh, due to the hard conditions of the just uh, oh, yeah. like carving the soil, the, yeah. uh, the soil, carving the rocks and making the tunnel. And uh, it took seven several years, and but it actually shortened the way and helped the uh, region a lot for the transportation. So we will be seeing the the Karaja cave, which is the uh, which is the masterpiece of uh, millions of years, uh, as you can see, a natural piece. The uh, traditional Hamsi köy, like the rice pudding, is so common and it's not tasting the same anywhere in the uh, in the rest part of the country. And famous about their rice pudding. Yeah, Hamsi in Turkish, it's a tiny fish. It's a fish name, tiny fish name, and the. Hamsi, that tiny fish is coming from that eastern part of the Black Sea. So wherever you go in that area, you can see the name and a food name or a place name starts with Hamsi. But it, this doesn't have any Hamsi in it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. And uh, so Hamsi Köy, it means Hamsi village. So that village is very famous with its rice pudding. Why it's so famous with this rice pudding? Because it's located on very on a very high level, and this, so they receive very delicious milk from their animals, and also the uh, nut hazelnut is very famous in that area. Seventy percentage of the world hazelnut is coming from that area, so it's so because of the milk. And the hazelnut, uh, and because of the special cook cooking uh, style, it gives a very delicious taste to the rice pudding. So it's that definite, we always recommend to taste that rice pudding if they don't have any allergy. And the Sumela Monastery, it's actually another uh, masterpiece. It was, uh, it has been first started by like two monks coming from uh, Athens. It's dating back to the fourth uh, century AD. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's actually, it has been extended. It, it was started with like uh, small pieces carved in the, uh, in the rocks and uh, expanded, expanded actually till the 19th century. And, it, and today it's actually with its 72 rooms. It's one of the, uh, treasures of the area. Yeah, that's why we put that it's photo to our presentation, uh, to, it's the first page of the presentation. And also don't be mis misled by the map that we should have shown earlier. The area that we're talking about is seriously mountainy area. So basically uh, there will be a very, very spectacular driving. I mean, that you could compare it to like uh, Turkish Switzerland, let's just say. With, with those incredible waterfalls that you will see on the way and this, this tiny, sometimes even lightly scary roads with the no you know borders or anything. So this area is, is something yeah. unique that you, you would never see in any random itinerary. But it would be nice to mention that the summer months would work better because otherwise the climate conditions might not be very friendly in that yeah. high mountain. <laughs> yeah. But again, uh, we considered that just we can end the program at the end of the program in Trabzon, just uh, taking the flight back from Trabzon airport to Istanbul and like onwards to your uh, pro, uh, onwards to your other destinations. Or we can always extend the program with the, the high plateaus of Rize, or as so, well like you have experienced. Yeah. Uh, continue and combine it with Georgia. It's a gateway to the Georgian borders and it's just like basically walk through the connection uh, <laughs> directly to the nearest uh, Georgian city of uh, uh, Batum. Yes. Now, so that would be one of the points to connect two countries.
<laughs> two extensions, <laughs> let's just say after Istanbul. The other beautiful, now we are just going forth to the Mediterranean and the Aegean uh, area with the beautiful, uh, with the beautiful architectural style of the Pisidian civilization and to, to border area which is a masterpiece and which can be considered as like a two day program or can be combined with uh, with driving to Fethiye and then continue onwards to like a resort program or a resort or a bullet sailing program and can be uh, extended with other optional areas or going down to Antalya yeah. maybe to continue further with the antique uh, cities or resort areas and it's a perfect place for lake lovers and there are beautiful uh, hotels lake hotels around the lakes because there are many lakes around it and now but we're going to talk about more ancient art but for the uh, extensions so we can continue with the other lakes as well Sagalatos was uh, once the capital of the Pisidian uh, Pisidian uh, Pisidian a civilization and it was known as the city of love and dating back to the uh, the three dating back to 3000 bc and today still we can uh, see a functioning fountain fountain coming from that area and all well preserved statues and uh, the area of the the, the all the artifacts uh, of the area are now being uh, kept in the Buddha Museum, which is a very important uh, archaeological museum with over uh, 50,000 artifacts uh, from the Pisidian civilization cities. Uh, and uh, as Shule said, the area is perfect for the lake lovers, which is surrounded by like the Karajaran Lake, Burdur Lake, Eirdir Lake, and uh, which is perfect for the outdoor lovers as well. And go for fishing, canoeing, biking, trekking, uh, like trekking or just as a, for a laid back time, yeah. and which is great for uh, to spend time at uh, at your own pace actually. But the second day can as well be combined with other uh, beautiful Pisidian cities, and uh, like the Kibera antique city, which was uh, again it's a which has been included in the tentative list of the UNESCO. Uh, yeah. UNESCO sites in 2016 and known for the uh, for the properly done structures, uh, symmetrical uh, structures uh, in the antique city. Or the Insu Cave, again one of the natural beauties uh, dating back to a million years ago with its cool air and it's good for the internal diseases and diabetics. Kremlin Antique City, it's another uh, Pisidian site and the UNESCO site and the UNESCO site and it's actually uh, from there there has been lots of like small and big uh, statues found of the Greek gods and the philosophers uh, and now being kept at the Border Archaeological Museum. Museum. The city of Sagalassos uh, is uh, described as a bird nest because it's located that high in the mountains yeah, yeah. Hmm? and Sagalassos. And the, the view from there is actually spectacular because you are that high uh, an altitude that you can see the, the beautiful surroundings like the, the you know, the, the countryside and the uh, water, well, not the waterfall, but the, the fountain that it's still there. It's actually rated as one of the highest actually active what, uh, fountains in the whole Roman territory by altitude. I mean, it's that high. That uh, well, for some reason they actually called the city uh, like a bird nest, and the uh, locals over there was always protected because uh, no matter what they were seeing, who's uh, approaching from uh, far apart. So the the views, picture wise, I mean it's just very impressive. And once yeah. Ephesus is just, uh, always crowded, and sometimes even like the overcrowded, and actually lose the joy of seeing those uh, yeah. beautiful structures. This city you can feel that uh, by yourself because <laughs> it's uh, less known, is is uh, hard to reach there. So uh, it it actually worth a couple hours in the car uh, uh, for for that moment of uh, peace, uh, quiet, and the actually pure beauty of the Roman creatures as it is today. 
I just mm. don't uh, want to go back to the uh, the map again, which we did not speak about, but the Sparta, where we are flying in uh, to get mm. to the destination is so important also for uh, for its flowers. Now, of course, we have the lavender fields, but more important to them is the rose. All these rose petals, like roses, are uh, being collected and they are being used for the for the perfume. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, and the most of the perfume, especially if, uh, you know that we uh, send it to friends <laughs> for to the uh, perfume, perfume, production. perfume production. Yeah, like the well-known names. So I don't want to give the names right now, but we know uh, all the names now. And uh, so they are producing the perfumes. If it in includes rose, it comes from tur uh, Turkey, that area. So there are like many the different areas that we can be creating. We can talk about like... Uh, uh, it, again, like yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, we did not. We have spoken about like Fethiye, and uh, hopefully that we can just speak about it with another uh, yeah. like webinar. But the Fethiye area can as well be as a combination or on its own. We can create different like walking uh, routes or like right. the hidden canyons or uh, again seeing the the old uh, ruined villages like the Kayaköy can as well be extended as a uh, yeah part it's of a program. perfect place for uh for a resort atmosphere it's a perfect place for the cultural historical and outdoor activities as well also if you're wondering uh, how i can combine those two let's just say some uh, northern mountainy area and something down to south uh, so it's it's easily connected with the wide domestic flight mm -hmm. network. We have many airports in almost every larger city in Turkey. So it's uh, it's it's never a problem. I can hardly remember if there is any site touristic site somewhere further than an hour from the airport. Maybe some really remote areas, but it's basically uh, attachable like a tiny pieces and let's just say blocks over two, three days and it could be combined in a really unique itinerary uh, as long as you know your client, your guest and you know what they would like to and uh, it, it, it could be just a perfect patch. So as you said, I mean, there are lots of things but we, uh, we will be, I mean, <laughs> as we just stop our uh, conversation, we very much love our country and we want you to love it as much as we do love it. So as you said, we upon receiving further details of uh, the expectations of the guests, we can like mix and match and create uh, the itineraries according to their taste. Yeah. And if you like to interest uh, just one part of the uh, place in this presentation, we love to speak about more for our uh, next Zoom meeting maybe. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this interesting and very detailed presentation and taking us to different hidden parts of uh, Turkey. And love the last picture. <laughs> it's so beautiful. Uh, we, we can, everyone can reach you uh, on Let's Connect 365 uh, and set up a 15 minute Zoom with you. And they can also invite uh, their clients. Huh? I see one, uh, Lisa. Could you head to Antalya instead of Fethiye Airport? Are there nice beach in Antalya? There are beautiful beaches in Antalya and there are beautiful beaches around Fethiye, Kash and other places. It's again depending on the, uh, the expectations. Because uh, if they are looking for like bigger uh, properties or like uh, bigger, longer beaches, then Antalya would be a, a good option for them. But if they're looking for more uh, smaller base, more secluded places, more a la carte, more service. A la carte service, then uh, like the Fethiye area can be a good Fethiye or Bodrum or Göcek uh, area would be good places. Mm -hmm. But as, as you have mentioned, uh, Antalya can as well be easily combined at the end of Sagalosos, Bodrum visits. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. I know we went a little bit over the 30 minutes, huh? but that was really interesting. You're going to send the, the recording to everybody and then I, uh, leave your information. So 
I'm going to wish everyone the American of uh, all of us celebrating uh, Thanksgiving tomorrow. And uh, But thank you for your time. I know you stay a little later for us. And uh, I'm happy to hear that you have a beautiful weather. And I guess we will be sending you maybe some festive requests because you do have some uh, option to offer. I see one more, maybe uh, one more presentation. Now, oh, Joyce, thank you so much. So much information. Yes, indeed. And they, they know they know they are, they know what they're talking about. Huh? And really, for everyone who have not worked with Item Travel yet, you can trust them. They're wonderful, and I hope you can tell by their personality and their knowledge. So, thank you again for your time, and thank you everyone for joining us uh, today. And we'll see you next week on other webinar. Huh? Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye, ladies.